What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome to another installment in my Tony Scott Marathon. Reviewing the filmography of Tony Scott. Today's review is his 1990 film. His big NASCAR racing film. Days of Thunder. Before I go any further, I will leave a link down in the description below to a playlist of all the reviews I've done on the Tony Scott Marathon so far. At the time of this video, I reviewed Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop 2, and more obscure films such as his vampire cult film The Hunger, and Revenge. So if you're a Tony Scott fan, i got a lot more Tony Scott reviews coming. So if you're a fan of his filmography, I'm sure there's something in that playlist you'll enjoy. I'll leave the link down below for you to see more. So Days of Thunder was released in 1990, the same year Revenge came out. It was another movie that was produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, who also produced Top Gun and Beverly Hills Cop 2. Then Days of Thunder, talented but unproven stock car driver, Cole Trickle gets a break and with the guidance of veteran Harry Hogg, turns heads on the track. A young hotshot develops a rivalry with a fellow racer, that threatens his career when the two smash their cars. But with the help of his doctor, Cole just might overcome his injuries and his fear. The race car driver Cole is played by Tom Cruise. The mentor is played by Robert Duvall. The doctor is played by Nicole Kidman. Uh, the rival competitor is played by Michael Rooker. And the movie also stars Randy Quaid, Carrie Elways, and John C. Riley. So this was one of the few Tony Scott films I had actually seen prior to starting this marathon. And going in, and when I first saw the movie, I thought it was okay. It didn't wow me by any means. There, I had a lot of issues with the story, but I thought it was okay, entertaining enough, and just moved on. And going into this rewatch, I mean the racing sequences are pretty well directed. Uh, they're about as well made as the other sequences Tony Scott did in Tom Cruise's other vehicle, Top Gun. And uh, I would say the best performance in this movie, I'm going to give it to Robert Duvall, considering I don't necessarily find the screenplay that good, more than that in my negatives. I feel like Duvall elevated, I think, the script, which is mediocre at best. And still gave a pretty compelling performance, I thought. Uh, better than what it should have been in any way. I think he did a really good job as the mentor character. I thought he was the one who seemed like he at least enjoyed being there. And the fact that an A-caliber actor still committed himself to a movie of this kind, it's pretty impressive on Robert Duvall's part. Now, I don't think Days of Thunder has held up since when I last watched it and I honestly am not a fan of this movie and my main problem with it is it's very uninteresting and it's just a derivative knockoff of Top Gun but it's NASCAR racing instead of aircraft and naval training. It's like with Goodfellas and Casino but Casino I can overlook the similarities because Martin Scorsese still crafted a great film with capable performances. Top Gun, not a masterpiece, but I do enjoy it highly. Days of Thunder, even though it has the same director, producer, and actor, I just don't think it has the same juice that Top Gun had. And even though Tom Cruise is a great action star, he's proven that time and time again. His role here is the most stock, generic Tom Cruise character that I've seen. He's essentially maverick, but nowhere is interesting. And he pretty much has the same traits as maverick, but he's a lot more unlikable in this because of his ego and his selfishness. And he doesn't really have characters like Goose or anything to back him up because of how unlikable he is. It's hard getting into his character. I also feel like Tom Cruise looks bored in this movie, too. It's like, a part of me thinks that even he realized the movie he was getting into and he cared as little as possible just to get that paycheck. I don't know if that's the case, but it felt like it from the movie I was watching. 
Uh, the movie wastes so many talented actors. I mean, I like Michael Rooker, uh, especially especially now that he's more popular than ever thanks to roles like Guardians of the Galaxy. But here, I, his character is so paper thin, and the rivalry he and Tom Cruise have, I just couldn't care for at all. And the movie wastes Randy Quaid, you know, Cousin Eddie from Christmas Vacation. It wastes him pretty bad. Uh, John C. Riley is a great actor, and the movie doesn't do him any justice either. I think the biggest insult waste of casting was Carrie Elways, who plays a last-minute rival racing character who becomes a cartoonish, one-dimensional villain. And by that point, I'm just like... This is just getting way too out of hand and stupid. I could not give two craps about what goes on in Days of Thunder. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I don't care for NASCAR at all. I just find NASCAR a very uninteresting sport. Because you have all these racers, they race around this circular track for hundreds of laps. And after a while, I just find it pretty boring. I know... It's still a dangerous sport. People crashing and you know, racers have died over the years. But still, I just don't find NASCAR that interesting. I mean, compare it, Day of the Thunder, to something like Four vs. Ferrari, which came out recently. And that movie just had so much ferocity and intensity to it because, you, you, because international racing you know, has all those turns and everything. And those tracks, I feel like, are a lot more exciting, in my opinion. Which is weird, because Ford vs. Ferrari did have an NASCAR race, but it was one of those tweaked races where they ride through the middle of the track, and you got sharp turns and everything. And that race was directed very intensely for James Mangold. But because this does the traditional NASCAR racing, I just found a lot of the movie tedious and uneventful. So I didn't care for the urgency. There is a romance in this movie. You got Nicole Kidman in there as the doctor who helps Tom Cruise's character out after a near fatal accident. And they have a romance together. I found the romance pretty uninteresting. The dialogue is not good at all. There's this one scene where Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman are in bed together. And he's doing an analogy of drifting with those sugar packs that you put in tea on her leg. And it's like an analogy of sex. And it's just as creepy as the animal cracker scene in Armageddon. And I've been, which is weird because they both had the same producer. I just found this movie a chore to sit through. I mean, Hans Zimmer scored the film. You think I'd get into the movie's score because I'm a big Hans Zimmer fan. But I don't even like the Hans Zimmer score. It doesn't feel like a traditional Hans Zimmer score. It's a lot more synth heavy and it almost sounds like the score in Top Gun. Now, I like the score for Top Gun because it was a symbol of the 80s. But Top Gun was released in 1990 and you think they kind of move on from that. But nope. This one felt like they were trying to recapture what Top Gun did. But it fell flat on its face. In my opinion, this is probably one of the weakest Hans Zimmer scores I've ever heard. But hey, he had to start somewhere. And he later went on to do bigger and better scores than this. So at least there's that. So all in all, I just don't care for Days of Thunder. I felt like they wasted its cast. I think the script and dialogue is very mediocre and forgettable. And some of which is very cringy at times. Uh, this movie wasted so many actors. It probably has like the most stock basic Tom Cruise performance I've seen, and just the Top Gun similarities of the you know the cocky person who gets into trouble, almost faces a tragedy, and has to overcome the adversity and prove himself. And just nowhere is interesting compared to what Top Gun did a few years prior. And I also don't care for NASCAR. I don't think the movie has the urgency that it's building up because I just don't care for the sport. And all around, I just find Days of Thunder to be a very forgettable movie with a lot of wasted potential. So I'm going to give Days of Thunder 2 out of 5 stars and on a 100 point scale it's getting a 36 out of 100. And that wraps up my review of Top Gun as part of the Tony Scott Director's Marathon where I review his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent effort. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and join me in the next installment of the Tony Scott Marathon where I'll be taking a look at his 1991 action film, The Last Boy Scout. Hopefully it'll be a heck of a lot better than Days of Thunder, but we'll see. But if you have seen Days of Thunder, let me know down in the comments below what you follow the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And if your comments are respectful, your comments could be potentially seen in future comment shout out videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, Besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!